I washed my hair today. Big girl vibes. Hey, it's Josephine from The Point Shop. You guys loved our point shoe hacks, and I'm so happy because I love doing these. I haven't seen these yet, but let's see what they do to their point shoes. Oh, yes. Okay, a lot of places are not allowing rosin on their marley floors anymore because you don't wanna ruin your beautiful marley floors. If you slip easily and those satin tips are super slippery, you can put suede tips on and then that'll kind of act like a rosin that has a little bit more grip onto the floor. And you can just glue it right on. And this is a 3007 point shoe. It's by Nikolai. Some people have an issue with balancing once they do that, but if you get used to it, it'll be good. Dead point shoes. Gorgeous. Ooh, Claudia. Is she trying to bring point shoes back to life? Does she not wear toe pads? Oh my gosh, this looks so good. Okay, so that will probably only last like maybe an hour or so. So if your point shoes are already dead, you can't really bring it back to life. You can probably get a couple more hours of it, but the best way to jet glue your shoes is either at the beginning or after one or two classes because once the shoe is dead, it's gone. Be gone. Customize my point shoes with me. Why do they look like different colors? Maybe it's the angles. Okay, so you can cut the satin tip off. A lot of times it will get destroyed while you're dancing. It's like the first thing to go. So if you just cut it off from the beginning, it's much less likely that it's going to fray. So you can cut it off. This part is like softening the box. So if you like your shoes a little bit tighter at the beginning and then you want it to widen out to make enough room for your metatarsals, that's a great way to kind of widen it. Ooh, Chakot. Oh, I haven't seen that in a while. I think if you went on point in my generation, almost all of us were in the Chakot Veronese, the one that looks like a pumpkin. But this one looks gorgeous. Look at that color, gorgeous. Okay, so separating the sole, and that's to make the three quartering a little bit easier. So some point shoes are really hard to separate. This one looks pretty difficult. So you actually have to use something. Some of them are really easy. You can just separate it with your hands and it'll just pop right off. Ooh, that looks like it takes some muscle. Okay, and then just break it off. Some people use uh, a knife. Some people will just rip it off. Okay, so she cuts out a whole lot. That's like almost half the shoe. So this is why three-quartering your own point shoes is like a better option than having a point shoe that's already three-quartered for you because you can put it exactly where your arch breaks and everyone's arches break in a different spot. Even your left and your right, they're different arches. So, ooh, that looks so hard. So yeah, there's certain glue and certain materials that are like difficult to do. That looks really difficult. Like freeze will just pop right off. Yo, that looks hard. <laughs> a lot of times you can ask for a three-quarter shank if you're doing customizations and then they will ask you to measure exactly from the tip of the toe to where your arch is so that they know exactly how much to cut off. So there's the inner shank and the outer shank and the middle part is the reinforcement and then usually when you do three-quarter shanks you just cut that reinforcement off. This will never get old. I am so stoked about this. Oh my gosh, that's like all, that's so much of the shoe. You will never get a pre three quartered point shoe that will be that much. Nobody would cut that much off if it's like a pre three quarter shank. This is almost like a half shank. <gasps> Luna! We did a point shoe fitting with her a very long time ago. She is such a cutie. If I remember correctly, she wears the Star Maker. I know everyone who wears Freeds, they have to have multiple makers that they dance in, but I think she wears Star. And I remember we fitted her in wine glass as well, and she liked that too. Oh, she's in B. She's in B maker. New makers will come and take over old maker marks as well. So for example, there's a new maker called Jay, but Jay's been around for a while, but it's a different person. Sometimes you'll get like an older stamp with the new maker and it's not gonna be exactly the same. Ooh, sounds so good. Ooh, okay, so taking out the nail. 
So a lot of dancers will want something that is easy to articulate, so like a softer shank and a harder box, and most of their support will be coming from the box. Cutting off the satin tip, just like we saw earlier, just to have a little bit more traction, to make the box last a little bit longer. These look so good. Never get sold. I think this is a studio. For Freed, there's a couple different models. There's the Freed Classics, and then there's the Freed Studio line. They're a little bit more consistent and kind of easier to get, just because you don't have to like wait for your maker. I still carry around a lighter in my backpack because of this. <sighs> Ribbons. I can watch this all day. I hope you like this series because I love it so much. So see how they're sewing the ribbon right where the waist seam is? It's a pretty good indication to where most people's arches are, but you could have an arch that breaks a little bit higher or lower. So depending on where your arch is, that's where you should sew the ribbon so that it pulls up the fabric. I love that sound of like pointies coming out of the bag. You guys, I love this series. Please love it with me. Oh, it's so good. Three quarter, look at her gorgeous feet. Okay, so breaking in the shank. So everyone breaks their point shoes. See that little piece right there? That's the reinforcement. You can cut that part off to make it a lot softer to go into your arch. The reason why people do this is to make the arch look more enhanced, but also to sometimes make your point shoes last longer. A lot of people will three quarter their point shoes and it'll last a lot longer than if they just wear it with the full shank. And again, banging out the shoe to make it a little bit quieter and softer. Oh, beautiful. Stunning. Okay, that was an anchor. The anchor maker is actually retiring in December. So he will be no longer, for those of you who wear anchors, I'm sorry to say that your maker is retiring. Oh, de-shanking my point shoes. Okay, so there's this thing called a demi point shoes. It's basically a de-shanked point shoe. It has an outer sole, but it doesn't have an inner sole. So it makes it a little bit easier for you to articulate your feet. You can take a point shoe and de-shank it to make it a demi point shoe. And there's a lot of different benefits to having de-shanked point shoes. Point shoe prep for class. Oh my God, my feet are falling asleep. <laughs> She just broke her shoe. This is another reason why I tell people to not touch their point shoes if you're not experienced because you can literally snap your point shoe. I think this is what just happened. We're just gonna pretend like that didn't happen. Even though point shoes are made on a straight last and there's no left or right, oftentimes there's a little bit of a discrepancy between the left and the right, so a lot of people will try to figure out which one looks more like your left foot or more like your right foot. They look really good still. I hope your shoes aren't dead. That's like the worst feeling when you like snap your point shoe. She customizes it so well, it's so beautiful. Okay, that still looks okay. Yes, girl. Oh, so pretty. Looks okay, I think we're good. And that was our point shoe hacks. If you guys see any more viral point shoe hacks you want me to react to or to explain, tag us in those videos. Please keep this series going because I love it so much. It's so pretty and I can watch this all day long. So I hope you like it. I'll see you guys later.